could have inhaled that. Why is that important, Rip Daniels? Because it says that this man was under the influence. Right? It says that. And then also it says something else, too. Uh, it, it lets you know what condition the child was in. Where was the child shot? The child screamed. The child screamed after the 20-something, 30-something shot. Over... He screamed over the siren. You have it there? Now, maybe you can get that out of your head. I can't get that out of my head. Chief, I can't get that out of my head. And every officer there, I guarantee you, if they have any kind of soul, could not get that out of your head. When that last shot fired and the sirens were going and they heard that baby scream, do you hear that? Listen closely. And that was the last thing you heard from LaMelo. No one in, 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 no one in Baton Rouge is advocating on his behalf. The children's guardians are, are just, like I said, they're burdened with funerals now. Three funerals, the mother, the son, and then the uncle. And uh, Smith's family is, um, is uh, persona non grata for the most part. I do know, and I need to share this with my law enforcement friends, that there are those out there who are waiting for the investigation here to conclude, and it needs to be timely. If not, then trust me, the Justice Department will be contacted. Just trust me on that. That will happen. There will be an, an, another investigation, even a private investigation. A child, that four-month-old baby is not alone. And this is not some advocacy against the police. Don't give me that. This is, however, an advocacy on policy and following those policies. Wrong's wrong. Wrong's wrong now. You know, I, I have grandchildren. Probably will have great-grandchildren very soon. I could not imagine this. If you ever want to get a lifelong enemy, you kill someone's child. Kill someone's child. I don't care who you are. It's an unforgivable sin. Unforgivable sin. So, I won't let it go, so every day you will hear it until we can tell my audience something that suggests some rationale for or explanation for why little four-month-old Lamello died. I'm sorry, was killed. If it was a mistake, and it very well could have been, say that. Doesn't mean that you get a get a pass. But it does mean that at the very least, our police and our judicial system is honorable. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that officers had an intent to shoot that baby. I'm not going to say that. I can say it was callous. I can say it was negligent. And I can say those individuals who made that decision, especially the commander who should have been in charge of that, need to be reprimanded very sternly. Very sternly. Very sternly. So... Uh, you can interpret that as you as you may, but if you start interpreting whatever Rip Daniels says, oh, he's against police, and I'm going to tell you, you are against babies. Oh, you're just against police. Well, you're against children, aren't you? Well, I resent that. Well, guess what? I resent you saying I'm against police. I'm, I, I, look, I like good police work. I like it. I brag on it. I can give you some good examples. I can give you some great examples. 
the police work that resulted in, in capturing those individuals who are allegedly responsible for the killing of McKithen by the Biloxi PD was excellent. Followed the leads, got some of the culprits, some of which have pled guilty to assisting the person who I think is off his rocker, who killed him, allegedly. I don't think that young man knows where he is, to be quite frank. He can't even, he won't even cooperate with his own psychiatrist. Not talking. And, um, it's going to be interesting to see how that happens. But the point is, is that it was the same Biloxi PD that very thoroughly and very safely, I might add, hunted down a cop killer, a suspected cop killer. Brought them in. Bro, good police work. My compliments. My compliments. Doesn't happen all the time, but I don't doubt that there are those who are looking at this professionally and saying, look, we've got to do this. And then there are those who callously wear the uniform and get the badge, grab the weapon, and feel that somehow or another there's a judge and jury, or, he's, or at the very least, the punishers. I'm going to teach you a lesson. And some of you cops know some cops who are on the beat who are just like that. You know it, I know it. And you got to get them off. But we're not going to let a four-month-old baby be shot down in the middle of I-10 in broad daylight with no explanation. Now, I can't rightly do that as a proud father. If you think I'm against cops and you're against babies, go ahead. Email me again. I'll be more detailed. What is this about? Abortion by cop? Come on. We go back and forth. Unlike others. Unlike others. I do tit for tat. I will one-up you in a minute. Call me with that foolishness or text me or email me with that foolishness and trust me on this. You better be ready. Because I can give as good as I can take. And I'll, I'll take your heart. I came from 33rd. And we know something about Jenkins. Learned it firsthand from my friend Chubby. Or Saikuli. Or any number of those individuals that can make you cry. When you start coming off with some allegation. Or trying to make someone feel or, or identify someone or brand someone as being something. You know, that's what conservatives do. You are a something. <laughs> everything, you're everything but an American and a child of God in their views. Uh, which brings me to this, folks. There is an extraordinary, extraordinarily important petition that's going to make its way around, and you must sign it. Don't listen to these crazy conservatives. Please. These folks is what's got us and has... Well, it's got us in trouble and it's kept us in trouble since the beginning, the creation of Mississippi. I dare them to call me. You, they won't do it because they know I'm telling the truth. Every bad policy for this country, and I dare say for Mississippi, has come out of a conservative's mouth. So when someone says that's what they are, I want you to tie everything to it, going all the way back to enslavement, to segregation. Those are all conservative concepts. Every last one of them. Uh, child labor, all of that, and the prison system. Lock them up, throw away the key. All conservative concepts. Now, of course, they're trying to come back and say, oh, no, we, 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 we formed it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you. When the 94 crime bill came about by one uh, Bill Clinton and a Republican, I'm sorry, a Democratically-led Congress, that bill dumped a whole lot of money into reform, especially for those states that em embrace reform. But conservative states like Mississippi took that money. Oh, they did. They did increase more police officers in schools, right? Cadet help program. They, or they went with that. What was it? The drug thing? The, uh, the, 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 the drug program that they had come out? Or they didn't use that. But they also use federal dollars to start private prisons, encourage them. And they came up with something else, truth and sentencing, 85%. Now, the Democrats, and I don't mind saying they were Democrats, they were liberal Democrats at this point, they were talking about reform. 
not in states like Mississippi. They were talking about lock him up and throw away the key. They came up with striped suit back. Remember that? Same time now, for those of you who want to criticize Joe Biden and others, it was states like Mississippi that came up with the 85% law. It's states like Mississippi that came up with, okay, three strikes, you're out. I'm going to read about a story here in a few minutes to tell you about it. The guy that's in there for less than an ounce of weed got life in prison as a habitual. No violent crime. I'll tell you about it. But it's the conservative concept that has consistently, consistently slowed down the wheels of progress because they do not want to include everybody. They are not for multiculturalism. They are not for inclusion. What they are for is circling the wagons and protecting their own and maintaining and managing the money. Federal dollars is good as long as it goes through their climate clause first which is why Mississippi is not turning back or sending back the $1.8 billion sent to them by a, uh, by a democratically-led Congress. Every one of our House members, with the exception of one, voted against it. Every senator voted against it. This state, as a result of the last stimulus, is now getting $1.8 billion, and they're trying to decide what they're going to do with it. Hey, I don't know what they're going to do with it now. You know, cause listen to me, we're rolling. The coffers in Mississippi are very, very up. Sales tax, well, I'm telling you, we were rolling. The conservative concept is very good as long as they keep the money and they, they maintain the good old boy system. But take all of us who are at the top. Democrats don't know how to articulate this, or you're just scared. You're, you're, listen to me, the Republicans are gone. Now you have Trumplicans. You don't attack the party, you attack the philosophy, the ideology. And the ideology that, is, that has been permeating ever since Ronald Reagan was conservatism, and neither of you have come forward to say what Rip Daniels has said, that, okay, you're conservative, here's what it stands for. This whole idea of against big government, all of that is just bull. What they want to do is maintain their thesis and make it fatter. But there is an initiative that's now about to appear on the ballot that you need to sign. You find out where it is, keep listening to this show, we're going to tell you where it is, and you need to sign it. You won't hear this on Tell South Super Talk and none of those conservative, directed, pansy, indoctrination stations. You just won't find it. These are the same guys who are against medical marijuana. My God, they're the same guys who are against everything that really is helpful, like Medicaid. Expansion? But this bill is about that. The Initiative 76 is what you're going to see. These guys got to get more than, well, 106 signatures of registered voters here in Mississippi. 106,000, pardon me. 106,000. And they've got to do this to get it on the ballot by 2022. What is it going to do? It's going to expand Medicaid. It's going to bring billions to this state. Don't believe these conservative crazies who will tell you, oh, they just want to get free money. They just want to get sick and get money. That is just the most absurd concept. You know what, you know what expanding Medicaid does? <laughs> it pays health care workers. Ladies and gentlemen, it pays health care workers. No sick people get a check. I know people who get Medicaid and Medicare, they don't get a check. They don't get a check, folks. They're sick. They're sick, and what they want to do is get well. And what you want, you know, it's, it's an incredible thing. I have known elderly people who will worry themselves sick because they can't pay their, their hospital bill. No, really. They'll go in, they'll go in for some illness, then they see the bill, they get so sick they can't go back to the hospital. No, really. And you say, well, why are they so worried about that? They, because they want to pay the people that help them get well. That is the most conservative concept. Don't tell that to these crazy conservatives. Whole, the whole concept of insurance is, insurance is to is to 
uh, ensure you that you can assure your care provider that they'll be paid, whether you live or die. It is to say, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to pay my bills, you know. So you have insurance. You don't, you, you don't want to send, it to send it to the poor house. I can't afford to get sick. Well, so you get your insurance, right, and then, you, you know, you're going to pay your deductible, right? And then you are assured, insured, that the rest of that, after the deductible, is going to be paid by your insurer, Medicaid, Medicare, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. So that the health care worker, the doctor, the nurse, the person that's cleaning your bedpan will be, can be assured that they're going to get a check from that same hospital and feed their children. It is an investment, literally. That money stays right here. And then, of course, the person that, frees, uh, that, that cleans your bedpan is able to go in and get a house, which means now the contractor now is going to build that house. The painter's going to work for the contractor. The plumber's going to work for the contractor. That sick person now has but one thing, and that is his health. How the hell, how could you even allow these people to indoctrinate you to think that Medicaid is a bad thing and expanding it? Oh, well, it's going to cost more. Listen to me. 94% of the expansion is paid for by federal dollars. Now, that's all our tax dollars. There's no doubt about that. But 94% of that money is going to be spent right here in Mississippi, with the exception of the drugs. So what does that mean? What's left? Well, 4%. Well, 4% of that has to be pointed up by the good the people of Mississippi. Well, listen to me. If I collected 94 cents out of a dollar, and all I had to do was put in 6 cents, for, let, me, let me get this right. For every dollar you give me, I got to give you back 6 cents. Yeah. I don't know if I need to do that. That might be too much, bro. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, see, I'm going to give you a dollar. Huh? And you give me six cents. Yeah, dollar. but why you got to have six cents? I mean, why can't I have a whole dollar? It's a nickel and a penny, brother. Would you rather just just your nickel and your penny? Well, I don't know. I, I, mean, I don't know where I'm going to find six cents from. Where am I going to get that money to give you your... Brother, brother. Huh? Brother. Huh? I'm giving you a hundred cents. Oh, you give me a whole hundred cents a dollar. I'm giving you a dollar. Well, where am I going to get the six cents from to pay you? Lord have mercy. <laughs> What'd you say? Lord have mercy. You're a little low over there. You know I'm giving you a dollar, right? Yeah, you give me a dollar. I'll give you a dollar. You'll give me the, what you were expecting six cents. So where am I going to get that from? <laughs> what? I got to pay you if you're going to pay me a dollar. I've got to pay you six cents. Now, how you expect me to do that? I ain't got six cents. Does this make sense to you? Does this make sense to you, Mississippi? This is about the dumbest conservative thing. These dumb conservatives are just simply breaking this state. And let me just tell you, a lot of you guys... You'll be a stupid fool for, for not supporting this if you're working in the health care business. And there are some. And by the way, let me know if you don't support it, because I have to change doctors or nurses or something. Something's wrong with you. Well, I just want to be a good uh, Trumplican. It's just dumb. Who, did you, who should you, where should you collect this six cents? Well, from those individuals who are making out, who are getting the money. I guarantee you. Hospitals don't mind giving you six cents back. So this initiative is going to make its way around. You won't hear much about it on conservative talk radio because they don't want you to sign it. I want you to sign it. It's sad that the only way you break the back of conservatism is to come up with initiatives like this. And as we speak, the conservative-led legislature is trying to stop the whole initiative pro process. If it were not for the initiative process, we wouldn't have medical marijuana right now before the courts. And they're going to try to stop it in the courts. Why, I tell you why, because the little guy is able to take care of the little guy. Do you know the liberal concept as opposed to conservatism? Here's the liberal concept. The poor are doing business with the poor. No, really. It is barter. It is barter. It is, it is a, it's a cash business. 
I'm just going to tell you that. It's the old days when you, you go in, I got a TV, you got, I'm a cement finisher, I pull you a driveway, you fix my TV. Now, conservatism, we want to tax that, that transaction. You made a transaction, didn't you? Or is this, well, I tell you what, we want to have, uh, we want to control all of the TV repairmen, and you've got to, you know, we, we, we want to, we don't want you to compete with this big box store that's in the TV business, so we're going to shut down the little guy. We want to all give all the props and incentives to the big box store. That's why you're seeing mom and pop's clothes daily. It's, ladies and gentlemen, they will take your tax dollars, take your tax dollars and build a highway to a big box store that's going to shut down your little downtown. Main Street's gone. You know why? This initiative is important. It is important. Medicaid is uh, it's health insurance is what it is. No, it is not a, no, this is not socialism. I want to make you sure, sure you understand that. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> President Barack Obama put this forward. It is a, the single payer. Bernie Sanders picked up on it. Single payer means you go in and you got you have access to Medicaid, but it's not like you're not paying insurance. Some of you will make enough to be able to pay into Medicaid. And by the way, it isn't free. You have to qualify for it. What this does is raise the limits. My mama could not receive Medicaid unless she had less than four thousand dollars in the bank and not a and, and no house. Not because my father was still alive, then the house was not a question. But right now, you do not qualify for Medicaid unless you have less than uh, four thousand four thousand dollars in uh, in wealth. Yes, you heard me right. That's poverty line. What this does is raises the poverty line, but it also allows you, the guy who is up, look, you know, middle class, upper middle class, right, who can't afford Obamacare, it allows you to pay into Medicaid and say, okay, look, I can afford two hundred dollars a month. Okay, give us two hundred dollars a month, and now you qualify for Medicaid. Bip, bam. You're paying for it, but then there's also an obligation. I want to make sure you understand this. Thereafter, <clears throat> if, for instance, you, you, you do have a house and you qualify for Medicaid, then, then we, the taxpayer, can then have obligations to your house upon your demise. I mean, this is how this works. And by the way, once you're gone, you don't care. Can't take it with you. But more importantly, most people who want to get sick want to make sure that those who help them get well, even if you try to help me get well, even if you try to help me get well, I want to make sure that you're taken care of. That's an honorable thing. That's, that is the real conservative thing. Tell that to the crazy conservatives. Philip Gunn, dictator Reeves. Right now there's about, uh, well, about... About 700, over seven, 750,000 people in Mississippi uh, who uh, qualify for Medicaid. We're the poorest state in the union, and the, and the state that has the least amount of insurers. 25% um, of the population, basically. So if it expands, you've got looking at another 200,000. One third, possibly, of the state's population could actually qualify for Medicaid. And that's not a bad idea. Not at all. That means, ladies and gentlemen, hospitals won't be shutting down in the Delta in many rural areas. That's what it means. It also means this. It means that, okay, well, that 6% I told you about, that 6 cents, it means that those hospitals and those doctors and those nurses then will be paying that 6 cents. And as well as that prescription drug, drug guy, uh, drug manufacturers, or they should be. But, of course, the conservative concept is we don't want them to pay we don't want them to pay that six cents. There's no more taxes. We're gonna pay some taxes. They're gonna have to pay six cents on that uh, on that dollar, and uh, we just don't want to increase the taxes like that, uh, Rip Daniels. And, yeah. Well, those who receive the money, should, I guarantee you, they'll pay it, and they should pay it. But you need to sign this petition. We're gonna keep you posted as to where the petition is. We might even have it in a few places ourselves, bro. Um. The federal government currently pays 94, eight, I'm sorry, 84, 84.5% of Medicaid expenses to Mississippi. The next largest federal share 
goes to West Virginia. I said 84.5%. Uh, initiative 76, write it down. We're going to let you know where it is. I want you to know that if it is placed on the ballot, then guess what the legislature, the conservative, crazy conservatives are going to do? They're going to come up with an alternative. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Same thing they did with every other bill, the education initiative, the medical marijuana initiative. They're going to come up with, uh, what do they call it, the uh, alternative. Yeah. 76A or whatever, or and they'll say that the the, the signatures were uh, uh, obtained uh, erroneously or illegally. Oh, absolutely! Somehow. If your legislator does this, you must remember his or her name and vote against them. We will encourage you. We'll give you the names. By the way, all of those legislators in the House, I, of course, the only one that voted for uh, the stimulus was Congressman Benny Thompson, the sole. Democrat, others, all others voted against it. You need to remember that too. And you need to write them or tell them to send that $1.8 billion back because after all, they don't like big government, do you? And they certainly, certainly don't like socialism. And what's more socialistic than taking $1.8 billion tax dollars? And if you're fiscally responsible, if you're against big government and big debt, then send it back. I dare you. It's Friday. We talk about whatever. We'll be back. It's dollar.